Yo, 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 yo. Yo, yo. This is Mr. G. And we're going to talk about reflections and properties of reflections in this video. So first thing is a reflection is a transformation of a figure that flips across a figure across the line. So ref reflections are our second type of transformations that we're going to learn about. So we're still going to have an it, a pre-image to start with. Then we're going to have an it, it's going to, we're going to do some type of transformation to it and it's going to result with a new image. So it is a transformation, but it flips. The key word here is flip across a line. So reflection is kind of like a mirror image. So we have our line of reflection. That is the line that we're flipping across. That's where the mirror goes, is on that line of reflection. So I'll tell you exactly what I'm talking about. I'll show you, show you some examples right now. So for this first one, we have X, Y, Z. Okay. We are going to reflect it across the X axis. So we're going to reflect it across the X axis. That means that this X axis right here is my mirror. That is my line of reflection. So all we do for reflections is we count how far each point is from that line, and then we put it on the other side of it the same distance. So for example, this X right here is one, two, three away from the line. So that means I need to go one, two, three away from the line on the other side of it. We're reflecting it across that line onto the other side, so the same distance away. And notice how it's still on the same point value of x is 1. So the y is just changing. The y is flipping from negative 1, 2, 3 to positive 1, 2, 3. So then this y value right here, this y point, it's 1 away. It's at negative 1, so now it's going to be at positive 1. And then this one's at negative 7, so now it's going to be at positive 7. And then the resulting image... It should be the exact same, but now it's in a different orientation. It's been flipped around. So it's been flipped around from here to here. Okay, and that's it. So it's figuring out what our line of reflection is, which it'll tell you in the instructions, like across this line. And then you just count from there. A couple things to point out. We still need to make sure these points are already labeled, which is why I didn't. We still need to label our new points, and they always get that little apostrophe at the end to show that that's the new point. Okay, so let's look at this second one here. Let's see. The figure shows a trapezoid A, B, C, D. Graph the image of the trapezoid after reflection across the x-axis. So we're going across the x-axis, label the vertices of the image. So, again... This is the x-axis right here. There's my line of reflection. So I am going to reflect it across that. So it's going to be flipping over that line. It's going to be a mirror image on the other side. So we're just going to count how far away it is. This D right here is 1 away, so that means it's got to be 1 away on the other side of the line. And that's my D. C is 1 away, so now it's got to be 1 away. That's my C. B, let's see here, is 1, 2, 3, 4. It's got to be 1, 2, 3, 4 away. And went positive 4 to negative 4. And then A is also 4 away. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. And there's an A away. It went from positive 4 to negative 4. So notice how the X values, when I flip across the X axis, do not change. But the Y values all became the opposite. So when we talk about reflections, we normally go across the axis. If I want to reflect across the reflect across the x-axis, like what we just did twice, here's how we write that algebraically. Very similar to translations. What we're doing is we're taking our point, and if we notice, our x values never change from the new from the pre-image to the image. The x values stayed the same. We're not adding, subtracting anything from it. Nothing's changing. But what's happening is the y value is going from positive to negative. Or from here, it went from negative to positive. So basically, we're changing the y value, which is why we put a negative sign there. That negative sign means that we are just changing the y value. So if it's positive, it's becoming negative. If it's negative, it's not becoming positive. So this is how we write that down algebraically. So this is, if I were to write down to, hey, perform this transformation right here, 
you know that means, oh, cool, all I'm doing is changing the signs of all my y values, my x values stay the same. You should be able to give me all of your new points. So how do these trapezoids compare? They are the same size, meaning that they are congruent. They're the same exact shape, same exact size. So therefore, they are congruent still. We have not changed anything. So these are congruent shapes. They've just been flipped around a little bit. They're just different orientation. So now let's say we suppose we reflect the trapezoid A, B, C, D across the y-axis. How would the orientation of the image of the trapezoid compare with the orientation of the pre-image? So orientation means which direction it's facing. So if I reflected this original pre-image across the y-axis, what we're going to do is we're just going to flip it across the y-axis. Well, it's going over the y-axis, and that's okay. So if this y-axis is my line of reflection. This is my mirror, right? So I'm still going to do the same process. I'm going to count how far away is B from the mirror. B is one away, so i got to go to the other side. So there's my new B. A is on this side of the mirror, one, two, three, so i got to go to the other side of the mirror. One, two, three. So it's just flipping around the mirror. So now this slanted side is going to be on this side. So we know that one, two, three for D, so one, two, three. So the new D is right here. C is one, two, three. So it's going to be one, two, three. The new C. So D and C actually swapped points. So it's still going over that mirror. It's still going over the line of reflection, the y-axis. It's just been flipped around, so now the slanted side is on the other side. And now it would be a reflection across the y-axis. Cool. So try this one first. So pause, try this first one, and then we'll talk about the second one, and then maybe I'll just try that one as well. But try the first one. See how you do it. Make sure it stays congruent, and then we'll check. So pause the video if you haven't done so. Do it. Okay. So it's saying reflect over the y-axis. So this y-axis, just for visual, this is my line of reflection. So that's what I'm reflecting over. So Z is 1, 2, 3 away, so it's going to be 1, 2, 3 away. There's my new Z. D is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 away. So it's going to be right here. M is 1, 2, 3 away, so it's going to be 1, 2, 3 away on the other side of the mirror. And then P is 1, 2, 3, 4 away. So 1, 2, 3, 4 away. I didn't do a very good job of putting my new labeled points. Maybe I should do that afterwards because look, now M's in the middle. Whoops. And so Z. So Z should have been on the outside. M should be over here. Makes it look better. Okay. There it is. So we flipped it across the y-axis. Now when we reflect across the y-axis algebraically, what that looks like over the y-axis is if we notice the y values are now staying the same. So like my Z, my y value is still 1, 2, 3 on both of these. It's the x values that are flipping. So my x values are going to negative. Or they're flipping and going to positive. So that's, the, that's what it looks like algebraically, the flipping over the y-axis. So we can actually solve this. Let me show you how you would do this algebraically on the second one here. So it's giving me all the points. Sometimes it's going to ask you to graph both the pre-image and then the resulting image. And you can always graph the pre-image and then reflect it to figure out your new image. Or we could also do it algebraically. Because if we said that going across the x-axis means we're flipping it over this line right here. Here's my x-axis. My y's are going from positive to negative or negative to positive. So I'm switching all the signs of my y values. Well, so that means my new points, I'm just switching the signs of all my y values. So my new point for t is going to be 2, negative 2. My new point for c is 2, negative 5. Z is going to be 5, negative 4. And 5, 0 just stays at 5, 0. Because if it's 5, 0, you can't, if it's on the mirror, it can't go, it can't flip it around it. So there is my new. Bam. Image. And the original one, just to see where we started, because, of course, 
you can always start with your pre-image if we need that visual. So this was the pre-image and then we flipped it over to our new image. But that's how we would do it algebraically. Because again, I know that a reflection across the x-axis means that I'm just changing my y values. So that's all I did. I just changed the value of my y's. That's it, guys. So I hope you guys, um, hope this helps. Again, for my things to remember, I would write down my algebraic representations. Okay. Oops, there we go. That's a negative y. And this is, maybe we, oh, we should label this too, sorry. So this would be across the y-axis. This would be across the x-axis. Cool. If you guys have any questions, let me know. And uh, thanks for watching. Gradius out.